Welcome to Procedural Pottery Part 1. Let's jump straight into Houdini and change the desktop layout to technical. For the whole tutorial we work in the geometry context, make sure the network is set to OBJ. Hit the tab key and type Geoto create a geometry container. Enter it with a double click. Let's have a look at a generic pot and analyze its shape. Pots are mostly symmetric, so we can focus on one half. I'd like to describe the silhouette with a few points. There is one point in the middle and another to the left for the bottom. The line between the second and third point above defines the characteristic wall. If we change this line we get a different pot. For creating a three-dimensional object we just revolve the silhouette by 360 degrees. The main question here will be how to manipulate the shape of this line to create infinite variations of pot shapes. Back in Houdini inside the Geo container we start with an add node. Let's create the three points as I sketched before. The first one remains at zero position. The second point goes one unit in x direction. We will set up the silhouette in the xy plane. In most 3D programs the z direction describes the scene depth. The third one goes left in x and up in y direction. Now we need to connect these points with a line. To do so lay down another add node. This time we go to the polygons tab and select by group. With the tiny arrow below the viewport you can expand the geometry spreadsheet and see three points. For primitives there is one entry, going back to our first node you see the difference. The geometry spreadsheet is an essential tool in Houdini to see what's going on in your setup. Now we have three connected points and to manipulate the shape of the line we need to add more subdivision. Hit the tab key and type in resample to bring in a resample node. Instead of resampling based on segment length I select maximum segments. Now I can type in the number of subdivisions. Using an absolute number allows easier manipulation in our procedural setup later on. In the next step I want to get rid of the sharp corner. The smooth node will help here. The effect can be adjusted with the strength and the filter quality parameters. Now we have a smooth basic shape with enough subdivision. Let's apply some noise. Hit the tab key and type mountain. This node allows to add a noise pattern. If you apply it to a flat plane the result will look like a mountain. Here the points on the line are displaced. I toggle off the Z vector to restrict the noise to the XY plane. We see that there is no deformation anymore and this is because by default the noise will be applied along the normals. N stands for normal and P for the point position attribute in Houdini. Once that option is toggled off, the deformation is quite dramatic and not really suitable to describe an outline for a pot. What we can do is create a normal attribute on the line pointing outwards. There are several methods to do this. I will use the polyframe node here. By default it calculates a normal attribute. Turn on display normals with this icon. Well, this is not the direction we want. We toggle off the default normal attribute. Instead activate the calculation of the by tangent and just rename the attribute to n. Now the normals are pointing outwards. Back at the mountain node, activate again the noise along vector option. Now we have a much better deformation. To get an even bottom of the pot I want to protect the lower part of the line from deforming. We can do this with an attribute mask, a number between 0 and 1, assigned to each point. To create this mask attribute we need another attribute first to describe the position of each point in the line. Go back to the resample node and activate the curve view attribute. In the parameter spreadsheet we can see that the value ranges from 0 at the beginning to 1 at the end of the line. Let's visualize this attribute also with a color node. Instead of the default constant value we choose ramp from attribute. In the attribute drop-down menu choose the curve view attribute generated with the previous resample node. In the viewport we see that low curve view attribute values result in dark colors. In the parameter spreadsheet the newly created color attribute appears as CDR, CDG, and CDB. Now I want to remap the curve view to a new mask attribute. I insert here an attribute remap node.
In the drop-down menu for the original name I choose the curve view attribute and for the new name I type mask. With the ramp we can manipulate the influence of the noise. With the default ramp we can see the same value for curve view and mask in the parameter spreadsheet. Let's visualize the new mask attribute and rewire the color node after the attribute remap node. Instead of curve view we select the mask attribute. When we now go back to the ramp and drag the curve, we see with the line color in the viewport and in the parameter spreadsheet, how the values of the mask attribute change. Now we need to tell the mountain node that it should consider the mask attribute for applying the noise on the points. Select blend, and in the dropdown switch from constant to use attribute. Mask is the default attribute name and already filled in. By toggling the blend checkmark we can compare before and after. Great. With this art directable spline we are ready to turn this into a 3D object. Let's add a revolve node at the end of the chain. When we turn off the light in the viewport it is easier to see the orientation of the newly created faces. To add thickness we bring in a poly extrude node. Change the distance to something like 0 0.1. Further down make a tick at output back to close the surface. Nice. Let's increase the amplitude of the noise a little bit for more deformation. With the offset parameter we can easily move the noise through the spline to change the appearance of the pot. For changing the proportions I go back to our first node and lift up the third point a bit. Now let's highlight the mountain node with a different color to find it faster when we want to change parameters later. There is a neat trick to use the timeline for changing parameters in Houdini. When you type in $f in a parameter field you retrieve the current frame number. To finish my node tree I add a null. This convention is useful especially in more complex projects and helps to find specific output elements easier. Finally I add a subdivide node to increase the resolution of the mesh. A subdivision depth of 1 should be fine for now. Let's turn off the wireframe display and turn on high quality lighting in the viewport to inspect the surface quality. Here we see an issue. I guess this artifact comes from the revolve node, separated overlapping points causing problems with the poly extrude node. Let's fix this with a fuse node, it snaps points within a certain threshold together and fuses them. Problem solved. Stay tuned. In the next part of the tutorial we will procedurally attach a handle to the pot. Thanks for watching.